are breathing in life again. You cause your sun to shine on darkest nights. For all that you've done, we will pour out our love. This will be our anthem song. Jesus, we
Well, hey there, everyone. My name's Brady. Welcome to The Mission, and thanks for spending part of your weekend with us. We've got a lot going on around our church, so we wanted to take a few minutes and tell you about some things coming up for you and your family. So check this out. On Sunday, November 15th, Bill Dew is going to teach and impart what he has learned through years of healing ministry around the world. He's going to share firsthand testimonies of God's miraculous healing power. So bring your faith and bring your friends and family who need healing or a fresh touch from God. God. Come step into the more that God has for you. Matthew 11 tells us that if we speak to the mountains of opposition and believe in our hearts, they will be moved. Prayer moves mountains in our personal lives, our cities, and the nations. Join Mark and Tammy Hawkins every Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m. live on the Mission Facebook page as we partner in prayer with all of heaven to move mountains, shift atmospheres, and change the world. Our prayers matter. Is it your time to be baptized, to engage in an outward expression of your inner faith? Celebrate your salvation experience by being baptized on Sunday, November 22nd. You can sign up in the lobby after service or on the website. Mission parents, if you have a new little one in your household, congratulations. Your baby is special and we invite you to participate in the Mission Baby Dedication on Sunday, November 22nd. Register in the lobby or online by November 17th. Hey, thanks again for hanging out with us this weekend. If you have questions about anything that you've heard today, or if you just want to find out more about the church, visit our website at imissionchurch.com, where you can register for events. You can also check us out on social media and on our Mission Vacaville app. We hope you have a great day. Good morning, Mission Church. My name is Sarah, and I am so excited to welcome you to our online service this morning. I have a couple announcements for you, so let's jump into it. Very first, and so exciting, our friend and um, just part of our family here, Bill Dew, is doing a healing training here at the church on Saturday, November 14th. Now, this is a free training, and you're going to want to come hear from Bill. He's got such a heart for this and a real anointing to release people into um, understanding their gift of healing and, and how to process that in the world around them. So, awesome. And secondly, our Rush Cafe here at the church is open Sundays and Wednesdays. Did you know it was open Wednesday? You do now. It's open Wednesdays to everyone. Come on by 8.30 to 11 a.m. Uh, now, it's my privilege to receive our tithes and offering this morning. I um, just want to read to you quickly a quote from one of the fathers of Reformation in the church, Martin Luther. And he's um, quoted as saying, I have held many things in my hands, and I've lost them all. But whatever I have placed in God's hands, that I still possess. So, friends, this morning, let's give in thankfulness and, and, and gratitude to the Lord. Um, as the ways to give come up on the screen, I'm just going to release a quick prayer. So, Lord, we thank you for everyone watching this morning or watching the playback. Father, those who, um, who are giving into your kingdom, Lord, we ask that you bless that and, and you, you bring a, an acknowledgement that those things that they put in your hands, Lord, they still possess and they possess to a greater measure. We thank you, Jesus, for everything you are and everything you do. And we bless your name in this room, in this place, over this live stream, in Jesus' name. Amen. So friends, I'm so excited to introduce to you now and welcome our senior leader, Dave Crone. Well, good morning, Mission family. It's good to be with you online today. Uh, I want to thank you for your patience and your understanding in this time in which we've had to pull back, at least this Sunday, and uh, not meet in person because of uh, some exposure to COVID-19. We want to make sure everybody stays nice and safe and healthy in this season. Uh, but I want to encourage you that COVID-19 cannot stop Matthew 28, 19, which is go into all the nations and make disciples of all nations. And we're still doing that, and that's still happening. You can't stop the kingdom through, through an illness. You can't stop the kingdom through a presidential election. The kingdom continues to advance. I was just in conversation with uh, our schools in the Philippines and schools in Fiji, and I was just amazed at what God is doing through them right now. Their nations have totally locked down 
And yet they are having more and more influence in their nation than they ever had before. In, in the nation of Fiji, they've reached out into other parts of, of the country and gone into churches and done training like they've never done before. In the Philippines, I just got testimony of people being set free from demonic forces, of people being healed in services that our team has gone out into churches to. So we're just thankful that the, the kingdom is advancing and it continues to advance. And uh, we're just celebrating that today. And uh, we'll look forward to probably being able to be with you next Sunday, uh, back in person and online. So uh, we look forward to that. You know, I'm, I'm just so thankful that the circumstances of the world do not define and limit the power of the gospel. And, you know, some of you woke up yesterday morning and uh, realized that we may have a new president. And for some of you, you think that's not a very good day, and others of you think it's a great day. But here's the thing. Every day in the kingdom is a great day because the king is still the king, and that's our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to talk a little bit about that this morning. Um, and I want to talk about having a perspective in this season that's going to be really important for us. And I'm not going to take much time this morning, so I just encourage you, grab a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, sit down and enjoy just hearing about Jesus a little bit today. And uh, let's just do this together. Uh, call somebody and invite them to come and join you. But take advantage of this opportunity to feed your soul and to feed your spirit on the things that will bring joy, that will bring uh, gladness, that will encourage your heart today. Uh, and not feed upon uh, the stuff in the world that just wants to detract from who Jesus really is. So would you do that this morning? So grab your coffee, grab your tea, as I'm doing right now. There's a lesson that I, I, I grabbed hold of years ago while I was out in front my front yard watching uh, the boys next door trying to shoot baskets on their, on their basketball rim. And it was interesting, that thing has, has stayed with me. The lesson from that moment has stayed with me to this day, and that was probably uh, 15 years ago. But one of the younger boys of the, the family that lives next door to us was out trying to shoot baskets, and he was, the, the rim was set up at 10 feet, and he would throw that ball up there, and it would hit the front of the rim and then fall back down. He did it time and time and time again. It was as if he didn't have the strength to get it over the rim and into the basket. So one of his brothers came out, and when his brother came out, he lowered the basket to give the, the, his brother a greater opportunity to make the basket. But an interesting thing happened, and this is what really, really grabbed hold of my attention. He started throwing the ball again at the basket, but it was interesting that it still hit the front of the rim and dropped to the ground. Time and time again, though the basket was lower, he couldn't make the basket because his focus was on the front of the rim. What I want to talk about is putting our eyes above the rim, of setting our hearts and our lives to act in this world above the rim. Uh, I think it's possible that the church in the day that we're in right now, and in, especially in our nation, I mean, there's, there's, enough, there's enough going on in this world right now to take us out of who we really are. And if we're, not, if we're not understanding that, and if we're not going after the things that God has called us to go after, we will be aiming below the rim and not be able to be successful in impacting our world. I, I just wonder that if we're not captivated in, in our nation right now, among the church, I'm talking about church people. I'm talking about those who are part of the kingdom of heaven. And, and I'm talking about those because I think sometimes we're captivated by the battle on, in the earthly realm when we should be looking higher, when we should be looking up. I, I came across this quote by Brian Orme. Brian is just one of those unique people in, in the body of Christ anyway and has great perspective. So let me, let me read this to you. Quote, remember when Jesus said, it totally makes sense that you are an emotional wreck today because your hope is absolutely supposed to be in a human being. As you have episodes of mental descent throughout the day, make sure to gather as much regurgitated data as you can that will feed the dissonance 
in your emotional and mental landscape. We want to ensure you are participating in mental gymnastics and thus can remain in a constant state of exhaustion and panic. Do you remember when Jesus said that? Yeah, me neither. What a, what a great quote and what a picture of how much of, the, uh, of the, the church is captivated right now with what's going on in our nation rather than what's going on in the kingdom. I, I came across a picture recently that, that struck me pretty important. It's a, it's a cartoon and it has this man in, in, in a prison cell. And on the floor out in front of the prison cell are two things. One is a loaf of bread and the other is a key to the cell. Now the man has a stick in his hand and he's reaching out to try to grab hold of the bread to bring the bread into him so that he can eat. Obviously he's hungry. And so he's reaching for the bread when there's a key on the floor that could release him from his prison. And it's interesting, what it, what it doesn't say there, but, but it was, does imply is that that man is going to reach for that bread, can get it what he wants in the moment. He can have the bread that he needs for the moment and miss out on the opportunity to be set free from the prison he's in. And if he does that and takes all his energy and all of his time to grab hold of that bread, then by the time he grabs hold of that bread, the jailer will have discovered that that key was left on the floor and the jailer will come back and he will have had his bread, but he will not have his freedom. And this is, where, this is my concern in the body of Christ right now uh, and for believers everywhere that we get so captivated by the momentary need, the instantaneous situation that we're facing that we forget that there are keys in the kingdom that God has for us to not just feed us, but to set us free and to put us into position to set free the people around us. Second Chronicles 7.14 uh, is a very popular verse all of the time, but especially in the day that we're in right now. And, and, and it should be because it does hold a strategy uh, for a way that we can live in difficult times. And it's 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It says this, If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and heal their land. There's a lot in that passage right there, isn't there? Let me just quickly go through that. It says to humble ourselves. This is simply acknowledging that he's God and we're not. It's just simply understanding that we need him. We need him desperately. And that humility attracts the grace of God. So we're to humble ourselves and we're to pray. It's one of the greatest privileges of the believer to intercede, to stand in the gap for those who need Jesus, for those who need help. And we as a, as a people of God have that honor and that privilege to pray to intercede on behalf of others. Then it goes on to seek his face, which let me just, let me just narrow that down to one simple little statement, and that's simply this, search out his perspective. We stand in front of the Lord, we look him in the eye, we look into his eye, and we see what he sees. We understand what he's under, he's, he's wanting us to see. And when we do that, then we know that we are praying the things that God would have us to pray. So we look, we seek his face, we find his ways, we seek his way. And then it, then it goes on, and this is what I kind of want to focus on for just a few minutes here. And that is, turn from your wicked ways. That sounds like a pretty potent statement, and, and it honestly is. But again, let's, let's reduce that wicked ways down to something we can understand as believers. And that is simply this, that it's talking about Ways that do not produce fruit. It's talking about ways that are useless for the kingdom of, of heaven. They do not produce life. They do not attract the partnership of God. They are ways in which we live. They, living below the rim is living in a way that is useless to the kingdom of God and useless into our growth, useless to our effectiveness in the world that we live in. So he's saying we're, we're to turn away from Turn away from actions, attitudes, thinking, ways of speaking, weapons of warfare that are the spirit of this world, that, are, that, that uh, add to the negativity that the world is in right now. 
things that are below the rim and do not produce fruit. You know, I, here's the thing. We're here for a reason. We're on this planet right now. God is not surprised with what's going on right now. He's not, he, he's not hiding somewhere. He's not cowering somewhere, hoping something else will happen. He is in the midst of all of this. And as such, he has put his people in the midst of all of this. The real challenge is to get above the rim and not be absorbed and captivated by everything below the rim that is in this world. And, and, and if we will do that, then we can be a positive influence in, to the people around us, to the culture around us, to the atmospheres around us. We can make a difference in this nation no matter who is president of the United States. We can make a difference, but we have to get above the rim. We have to stop focusing our attention and aiming our warfare at the things that do not matter. I hope you're, you're catching what I'm trying to say here this, mor this morning. Instead of focusing on the wicked ways, I mean, we could make a list here of all the useless ways that we, uh, we tend to, to go after the things in the wrong way. But I want us to just kind of look at above the rim. I want to turn our focus. I want, I want us, as we, as we end this session in just a little bit, that we walk away from this time that you turn, from, turn to whoever's in your living room with you right now or in your kitchen or in your office, wherever you're watching or hearing, listening to this, you turn to them and say, that's my focus. That's my focus. That's the one that I want to focus on. I want to get above the rim so that I can be effective in the world that I live in. Listen, we are here for a purpose. God placed us here. You're no accident. You, you were made to be put in the, in the culture you're in you were made to be put in the job you're in so that you can have influence. We are salt and light, but we get to be that. We are that. Now we get to act like that in the world that we're in now. So I want to just, uh, just focus on something that is far more positive and far more helpful and really is the point of it all. And I'll go to Hebrews chapter 12. It says this, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Hey, let me just encourage you. You think you're surrounded by negativity. You think you're surrounded by things that aren't working right. You think you're surrounded by people who disagree with you. But listen, the real truth is you're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. A cloud of witnesses that are, that are cheering you on and saying, you can do it. You can do it. In Christ, you can do it. So be encouraged today. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses that know what it is to persevere. So let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. In other words, let's get above the rim and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. And here's, here's where I want us to focus. Verse number two, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Where do we look? Circumstances? No. Where do we look? Who's president? No. Where do we look? Who's in the Senate? No. Where do we look? We look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, I'm, I'm going to do something right now, and I, I'm, I'm just going to trust you'll stay with me. Years ago, I came across a speech by a man by, by the name of Shadrach Meshach Lockridge. He was a black preacher in the 70s. And he preached a message that so impacted me and has gone around the world. Many of you have probably heard it before. You may have seen it on YouTube and taken advantage of it. But here's what I want to do with this today. I'm going to read that message to you. It's all about Jesus. I'm going to read that message to you. And I want you to just close your eyes and just absorb right now. Take it in so that your eyes start to be lifted above the rim to where you can be effective in the world right now. Listen, I know there's a lot of fear out there, and I know there's a lot of concern about what, what's going to happen in our nation, what the policies are going to be, all of those things. And, and I'm concerned too. I have concerns over those things, and, and I pray into those things. But listen, we can, we can best pray from above the rim rather than below the rim. When we pray from below the rim, all we do is, is just kind of complain rather than really intercede. And so we need to get our eyes lifted up. And the best way is to look unto Jesus, 
the author and the finisher of our faith. So I'm just going to simply read this and uh, ask you to just absorb it and listen to who Jesus really is. The name of this message is called That's My King by Shadrach, Meshach, Lockridge. My king was born king. The Bible says he's a seven-way king. He's the king of the Jews. That's a radical king. He's the king of Israel. That's a national king. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he is the Lord of lords. Now that's my king. Well, I wonder if you know him. Do you know him? Don't try to mislead me. Do you know my king? David said, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. My king is the only one of whom there are no means of measure that can define his limitless love. No far-seen telescope can bring into visibility the coastline of his shoreless supply. No barriers can hinder him from pouring out his blessing. Well, he's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. That's my king. He's God's son. He's the sinner savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He stands alone in himself. He is august. He's unique. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He's supreme. He's preeminent. Well, he's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the supreme problem in higher criticism. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the cardinal necessity of spiritual religion. That's my king. He's the miracle of the age. He's the superlative of everything good that you choose to call him. Well, he's the only one able to supply all of our needs simultaneously. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the aged. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meek. Do you know him? Well, my king is a king of knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. He's the highway... He, he's the master of the mighty. He's the captain of the conquerors. He's the head of the heroes. He's the leader of the legislatures. He's the overseer over the overcomers. He's the governor of governors. He's the prince of princesses. He's the king of kings, and he is the Lord of lords. That's my king. His office is manifold. His promise is sure. His light is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting, and his love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy, and his burden is light. Well, I wish I could describe him to you, but he's indescribable. He's indescribable. That's my king. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible, and he is irresistible. I'm coming to tell you this, that the heavens of heavens cannot contain him, let alone a man explain him. You can't get him out of your mind and you can't get him off your hands. You can't outlive him and you can't live without him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. The witnesses couldn't get their testimonies to agree. Harold couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him and the grave couldn't hold him. That's my king. He always has been, and he always will be. I'm talking about he had no predecessors, and he'll have no successor. There was nobody before him, and there'll be nobody after him. 
You can't impeach him, and he's not going to resign. That's my king. That's my king. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Well, all the power belongs to my king. We're around here talking about black power and white power and green power, but it's God's power. Thine is the power. Yeah, and the glory. We try to get prestige and honor and glory for ourselves, but the glory is all his. Yes, thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever and ever. How long is that? And ever and ever and ever and ever. And when you get through with all of the forevers, then amen. Listen, take every piece of that into your heart right now. Just take it into your heart. And know that he is, ever, he is all of that for you in this day. He is all of that for America in this day. He is all of that for the nations of this world. He's all of that, and he will never stop being king. There are a lot of just and important causes that face our nation today, and, and we need to be good citizens. And we need to stand for what is right. We need to support that which is righteous and to help those that need help. But let's never forget that we're the church, the salt and light of this world. We can't allow the political spirit of this world to define our agenda or to set our narrative. We have a better, above the rim answer. You know, there's a saying that Deb uses often when she talks about how her kids have challenged her at times. And it's this, you're better than that. I think right now the church is better than the church is acting. And it's time for the church to look above the rim, to begin to act like the church that Jesus said would not, the gates of hell would not be able to prevail against it. That's the church he's looking for. And that's the church we can be. And we get to do that with, with Jesus the King as our King. I want to pray. I want to pray for you right now, everybody that's watching, and listening. I just simply want to pray that you would have that perspective of heaven, that you would have the perspective of God, that you would present yourself before the Lord, the King of Kings. Look into His eyes and recognize what He sees. Focus on what He is focusing on, and don't allow the things of the world. The distractions, the issues, all of the concerns, many of them genuine, I, I understand. But let's not let those determine our identity and who we are as a people of God. It's time for the church to really be the church that Jesus declared we could be. So I want to pray for you, every one of you as individuals, and uh, I'm going to pray for our nation, and uh, just so that we can begin to be that church that lives above the rim and is effective in the world that we live in. So will you pray with me right now, wherever you are? So Father, I thank you for those that are watching right now. I thank you that they have a heart to, to hunger after you and thirst after you. Lord, I just, I just bless them now. Uh, and, and I just say, I say in the name of Jesus, do not fear. In the name of Jesus, do not be consumed. In the name of Jesus, do not allow the, the circumstances of the world the voices of the world, to dictate who you are, but stand in the, in the peace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit that God has given you. And so, Father, I just pray that you would, you, we could stand before you right now and look into your eyes and see what you see. Just as Jesus did only those things which he saw the Father doing, Lord, give us that kind of vision to see exactly what you are doing so that we can respond and act in a way in partnership with you to see all those things brought to pass. We know, we pray, let your will be done in America. Let your will be done in our homes. Let your will be done in our nation, in our families, in our lives. And let your kingdom come. Let true revival sweep through this nation, Lord. Let true revival, we, we recognize that you are not silent in this time. So give us ears to hear what you're saying to the world that we live in right now. 
And I pray, God, over every home, every household that right now is, is struggling financially. I pray a blessing over them. I pray a release of finances. I pray a release of joy and hope in this situation. I pray for jobs and more jobs. I pray for provisions to come out of supernatural areas and out of natural areas. I pray for strategies over every one of the households that are listening right now, strategies for this next season. And Lord, I pray for all of us that our eyes would be upon you the author and the finisher of our faith, that we might see above the rim and live in that way. And we give you thanksgiving, Lord Jesus. And I pray even right now that some would be watching right now who maybe are dragged into a household and said, you need to listen to this, but you don't know Jesus. I pray for you right now. I pray right now for you that you would come to know Jesus. He so loves you and he's so above the rim for you. He has more than you can even begin to understand and he wants, to, he wants to know you and you to know him. So I encourage you, if you're with someone right now, just say, how do I know Jesus? Well, here's the way. You just simply ask him. Just simply say, Jesus, I need you. And I encourage you to do that right now. Well, it's been a joy to be with you today. I, uh, I, I really look forward to being in person again. Uh, we hope that that's this next week. We'll be letting you know. Make sure and watch our website and uh, Facebook and all those things. I'd encourage you, here's one encouragement I want to give you to, uh, that might be helpful to you. Be real careful on Facebook right now. Be careful what you're watching. Be careful what you're reading. And I, I just, here, use Facebook just to connect with the church. Would you do that? Maybe just do that. I don't know, maybe that's not all, all real good, but I, I think it might be helpful right now because you're going to see and hear so many things that are not going to be helpful to you and in your growth in the Lord, and in your ability to make an impact on your world. So let's just be careful what we allow to come into our internal garden. Don't allow seeds to be planted that will bring destruction and hurt and confusion and fear. But feed your soul on the things of the Lord. All right? Well, I love you guys. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. God bless you. We got it. This is a great day. <laughs>